know, your training, your mindset, your preparedness leading up to a violent encounter. Now we're going to discuss the aftermath of a violent encounter. You know, we hope that we never have to experience it personally. I myself have experienced a violent encounter, which is why I wanted to do this section because it really related to me. I know Helen has spoke of her assault. Uh, has anyone else experienced a violent encounter where there's a great threat to life? Diane? Uh, Richard. Yeah, so, you know, as I go over this topic, you know, if anything resonates with you and brings up memories that you want to share with the class, I encourage it so that other folks can learn from your experiences, okay? Now, there's going to be six stages of emotion. Know that these emotions aren't all universal, right? We're all different. Um, if you've never found yourself in a violent encounter, you won't know how you will feel. You may feel some and maybe not all of these emotions, and maybe not in the order that I tell you about them, okay? So, the first, uh, after a violent encounter, the first, one of the emotions that you may experience is elation. Who can tell me what that means after a violent encounter? Uh, why would you feel elated? Survived. Yeah, you survived. You know, you feel just sheer relief. You feel, you know, euphoric, you know? Um, and it doesn't have to be a violent encounter. You've, you've read the news report sometimes there's an airliner that people think is gonna crash, right? And the pilot's doing his best to get back to the airport. And once the plane has touched wheels, what does everybody do in the plane? Clap and cheer. Clap and cheer, you know, oh my God, we survived. You know, so you've been in an incident where you felt your life was in danger and you know, you didn't die. You just feel happy, feel relieved. Um, you know, there's lots of, uh, you know, when you talk about mass shootings, you have folks that made it and folks that didn't make it. So along with that elation, the folks that survived, you know, after you feel elated, you, may, you start to feel guilt that you survived. So that's also part of being elated. So you, then you start to feel guilty. Why did I survive and why did the person that was standing right next to me didn't, right? Um, so that's one emotion you may feel. The next one is, let me grab another marker. Revulsion. Anybody want to describe what that feels like and why you would feel that? Without an encounter, maybe you had to take a shot. You think that you had, you think that you had to do it? Or feel bad, guilt? Okay, that's that's part of it. Yeah. But what's revolting about it? That you what? took a life? That you took yeah. a life? Has anyone ever seen, uh, I'll share my experience now. As I mentioned in my intro, I witnessed a, a gang gun homicide in an old restaurant. Um, as close as John is to me, somebody was shot in front of me. So to process a human being's life taken, and it's not like the movies, you know? There's a vividness to just seeing the color of blood, you know, that Hollywood can't capture in real life. It was, you know, you may feel nausea, you may vomit, you may feel faint because it's horrible, right? The sight, the smell, the sounds, you know? So you, 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 you just this vis very visceral reaction is what revulsion is, okay? Another emotion you may feel is more along what you were saying, Jason, is remorse, right? It doesn't matter if we are morally justified, our lives were legitimately threatened, right? And those of our loved ones, and we, even though we were morally justified at taking a life, if we had to, you know, we're moral folks, you know, we're law-abiding citizens. We don't feel good about that, right? We don't celebrate that we had to take a life. So you may feel very remorseful. You may feel guilty, right? Uh, you may feel like a bad person that you had to take a life. And know that, you know, you may feel any of these emotions. You may feel like, what's wrong with me? I, I shouldn't feel this way, right? It's not, there's nothing wrong or evil if you feel any of these. These are natural human feelings that you're going to feel. So just accept that they're, they're natural reactions. Okay, don't be too hard on yourselves. Okay. Another emotion. Oops. Self. Self doubt. Anybody want to explain why someone would feel self doubt after a violent encounter? Because you're not absolutely sure that that was absolutely necessary. Absolutely, you're going to be double guessing yourself, right? You're going to be replaying the events trying to process what happened. And you're gonna ask yourself, did I really need to take that shot? 
could, was there something else I could have done to just avoid the situation entirely? You know, and not resort to having, take a shot or maybe taking someone's life? So that's another natural reaction is, you know, you're gonna have a lot of doubts about what transpired, what you could have done differently. Okay, does that make sense? Anybody have any questions so far? Okay. Um, and then another stage or feeling that you may go through is acceptance. You know, you, you go through all these stages, right? The self-doubt, you know, you start replaying the events. You start trying to rationalize what happened. And, you know, hopefully you come to some place of, you know, acceptance where, you know, it is what it is. You can't change what happened. You did the best that you could, right? To protect yourself and the lives of your loved ones. You, you did what you had to do. You felt like there was no other choice. And hopefully you can come to a point where you just, you know, learn to live with that. Right? You can't take it back. Right? So at some point, you know, if you ever have this encounter, hopefully you may come to some point of, of peace with yourself. Okay. Um, and then the last stage uh, is PTSD. I don't want to have to write out the whole long phrase, but yeah, post-traumatic stress disorder. It's talked about a lot in the press. Um, usually, you know, often it's mischaracterized, like, you know, maybe overused or misapplied. Right, very used very liberally, um, but you know veterans, right, who've seen combat, you know, suffer PTSD, victims of trauma, right, assault, you know. Um, what are some? Can you tell me? Uh, have you had uh, folks in the Marines and combat veterans that you know that have undergone uh, displayed PTSD? What are some of those symptoms? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it ranges depending on the, the amount of or what the stress was. But I mean, fear of leaving a building, fear of being around people. Right. There's, there's a lot of different things that impact them. Yeah. And, and you know, if you have, you have these symptoms of PTSD, you can't, sometimes it, you know, you don't want to leave your house or you don't even be around people. It affects your normal function as a person. You may not even be able to hold down a job, right? It could be that serious. You know, there may be sights, sounds that suddenly trigger that trauma. You may have uh, recurring nightmares. So, so it is a, a serious disorder, and you know it's norm. It's normally you sh it should be diagnosed by a, a licensed mental health provider, right? Just know that you know not everyone, and actually statistics show that the majority of folks, whether it's civilian or veterans, who've been through stressful, you know, life-threatening, traumatic, violent encounters, don't all you know experience PTSD. Okay, so those are um, the six stages of emotional states that you may feel after a violent encounter. Um, did anyone else want to share their experiences about those? It's okay if you don't. This is a very personal, personal thing. You know, no pressure, okay? And uh, if you don't have any other questions, uh, yeah, that's, those are six stages. Sound good? All right. Yeah.